Okay, welcome to the Village of New Paltz Planning Board meeting Thursday, November 8th, 2018. Uh, we have no public hearings uh, today, so we do have space for public comment. Is there anyone here for public comment? Seeing none, we will close public comment and move forward. Uh, so the first one we have is Bobby Downs. Did you happen to print out in this packet, Ashley, the resolution I wrote? I have a Can I have it, please? Okay, so Bobby is converting a commercial use property to a mixed use commercial residential. The one issue we had was um, we wanted to see the parking. Uh, I don't think the concern was so much whether there was parking, because we're well aware that there is parking. The concern was whether there is designated parking um, specifically for uh, the residents. And so um, because a site plan can only show what you think it's going to be, what I'm proposing is that the resolution says that, um, that you're going to be expected to sign accordingly where it's reserved for your residents so that that sure. that they have some parking for sure and sure. so if that's okay does yeah, that work fine. for yeah. what we're yeah, concerned with sure. you had plenty of parking anyway. yeah it really wasn't yeah, the I, numbers yeah, it was I, just knowing that your residents and had I know there's no spot. sort of believing <coughs> the applicant but I'm certainly committed to my tenants I mean, my, that they're my primary sure concern. and I realize your, your your job is to be you know a and you know, it's not even just you. Say you decided to sell the building, we would, and sure. if they kept it the same way. Sure. The, the next guy. We don't. They may not be so nice as you. So, um, okay. So, were there any other issues? Okay, seeing none. Um, whereas on about September 11th, revised October 17th. So I have to put both the site plans because I need to have dates align themselves. Um, Robert Downs Interzone Incorporated applied for a site plan amendment for 54 Main Street. Uh, the SBL is wrong. I got to change that. Yeah, I just saw. Uh, <coughs> for use, uh, change from a commercial to mixed use, uh, commercial residential. Um, now, therefore, it's resolved, hereby resolved by the Village of New Paltz Planning Board that the proposed site amendment for 54 Main Street. Um, for use, change from commercial to mixed use, commercial residential, as shown on the site plans, um, are hereby approved, subject to the following condition. So the first is that reserved parking for residents and customers are 54 main are signed accordingly. Thank you. And the village right to enter the property for purposes of inspecting, correcting, and maintaining the stormwater facilities and payments of all fees and final site plan as submitted. And I'm going to make sure no well. So um, no well is an option. So you're obviously going to vote. Yep. Um, and Mitch Soto is not here. So a motion to approve the resolution. So a motion. Second. Second. Third. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So you are done with this. And we'll see where your next project takes you. Great, thank you very much. Yeah. Good luck. Are you here just for that? No. Oh, you got more for us? Yeah. Okay. Did you say that was anticlimactic? That's what you're here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Number two, Sean Hanley. Um, Sean Hanley is on Zoom. You want to come on down? How are you? Welcome back. <clears throat> So this is a subdivision so that you can put up another house um, in the second plot. And so you were told by the building inspector, right now the house is non-conforming in more than four or three bedrooms as listed and that you are going to provide us with evidence that it's a three bedroom yes. prior to any subdivision. So apparently in the record a long time ago, Today and that's not what the county has. The county has three beds. County has three. Today is Friday. We modeled it. We have floor plans here. It's a three bedroom house. Um, and it needs to stay that way to, to meet zoning. So we, I just got these now. But uh, here's the floor plan for the house. 
Okay. Got it. Bonus room. <laughs> right, and that, that was, I think, part of Corey's concern, but it's going to get inspected every year. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, so at this point, this is listed as a type one action under seeker. Um, so <clears throat> mostly because it's contiguous to the New Paltz Downtown Historic District. So uh, have you used the mapper to do a full EAF? Yes. Have you done that already? For yeah. this? Okay. And did you submit it to us? Yeah. Okay, good. So we have it. Um, so, um, so we need to, do we need to make a motion to, to make it a type one or we know it's a type one? Ashley? Um, they actually only did the short. Yeah, I think we did the short. Okay. So we need it's, it's much, it's a little bit longer. And the mapper, can you explain the mapper? Sure. Um, and he actually did complete the short form of the mapper. So oh, so you know the mapper. Yes. So, so why is it a type one? It's actually, so it's an unlisted action, and then because it's then for the neighbors to a historic district, that elevates it to a type one. So that um, I just ran the number for the full EAF part one off, and that's actually a question on there, so that's when the state already determined that it's substantially contiguous, so that's why it's elevated. Wow. So there's going to be a lot of type ones. <laughs> You know, and what tends to happen is a lot of those questions might be uh, not applicable, um, but you do need to go through it. Um, do you know what the platform is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so it's the same app or process there. Yeah, it's just it's instead of short, Okay, so we don't need a motion to, for that, but we do need a motion to declare us as the lead agency. Well, you would need to declare your intent to be lead agency because I believe there's a variance required for one of the side yards. Yes. Okay. Whatever variances we uh, we need, I want to make sure we're getting all of them because the, the the new lot line on the side of the old house is a little bit short just because of the 50 feet. But do I need to get variances for for pre-existing front yard and and side yard on the other side? I just want to make sure whatever variances I need, I get them all. I would say that. Are you changing the pre-existing house? No. No. You're just talking about this 24 foot front of the setback that's the current house? Yes. But instead of 25 foot. Right? The one that we're creating <laughs> is the side yard. Right. But I have seen towns make the gas for the other side because we're creating this lot. So I just want to make sure. Yeah, so I think you should check with Corey. Okay. Um, so I guess my question again, Ashley, is do we have to make a motion to identify uh, our intent to be the lead agency or is it just a, a discussion? Yes. Okay. So because he came to the planning board before the zoning board, the typical path is that we are the lead agency um, on the seeker. So uh, unless there is a concern or issue with that for whatever reason, um, can I have a motion to for our intent to be the lead agency? So motion. Second? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Okay. I think Noel second first. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and then this will be re uh, exempt from review from the Ulster County Planning Board. So I think that it's really just making sure you have that full EAF, figuring out with Corey exactly what um, issues he'll have, if any, uh, other than the ones you know. And um, now what we have been doing is I created a sort of conversation form between us and ZBA, so I can say, you know, we have issues with this, we have no issues with this, you know, this is, we're sending it so that they have a, an idea from our intent, so we'll send that once we know from Corey whether there's anything else. 
to apply for the variances. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're good. You showed us that there's it's a three bedroom, so we're not stuck on that anymore. Apply for the variances, and then we can move through making it administratively complete and have a public um, hearing for the the, uh, the subdivision. It is a requirement. Yeah. One thing from Corey's notes is the parking issue. I don't know whether or not, just to, to get ahead of start on, on it's going to take out a parking spot, at least according to the site plan. So that's the first time seeing that. The new driveway that you've got for the existing house? Yeah. Um, so I assume I the, the where you've got the dark shading is the new pavement for the existing house. Right. And then you're going to have a hard lot line next to it. And then next to that is the existing asphalt that I assume is supposed to be the driveway for the new house. Correct. Right. But a driveway for the existing house takes out uh, a street parking space there. Um, the, In uh, Corey's impression, that, that takes out a street parking space. And I guess the question I have is depending on the rental situation, I mean, I, I don't know the details of, of our required parking spaces, but I know those are tight, those are tight driveways. That you're looking to put in there so i don't know what the math is in terms of parking spaces and what the play is with removing a street parking and, space right there right and whether that has to be also brought up to the zba if you're reducing the parking so i think that's another good query question okay. um of whether he feels like that's going to become a problem that you need to ask for a variance from that parking <laughs> i mean it's street parking I think he's pointing it out to us because normally we don't, we're more concerned with that parking on the, the lot itself. But, um, so what, what does that leave you for parking space in, for the existing house? So it's, it's three spaces. It's really just a standard driveway and, and there's a park straight There's three spaces for each house. And how did you do it when it was nine bedrooms? That was like from me. Oh, okay, it hasn't Before, been rented no, as a nine no, bedroom no, no. in a long time. It's, it's been a single family house, three bedrooms, single right. family house. I mean, my, my concern with it is that, that the way the driveway is now, it's got that asphalt, and then the area where you're going to pave is, is kind of grass, and people could, I guess, have informally park cars there before, but if you're going to have a hard lot line there, that the existing house driveway is going to be real narrow, and I don't know what the math is in terms of parking spaces, and I'm just wondering whether or not, as we're talking with Corey, et cetera, especially, is there a way to not take out the parking space? Is there a way to make it a shared, only have one entrance, so you don't take up the, the street spot, but have the driveway be shared and not have to have two separate entrances and not take away the parking spot, so, stuff because like they, that. I mean, it's pre-existing non-conforming with parking. So, I mean, Ashley, would, in your sense, because no matter what, it already has too few, even if you had the third. Because it would have to have six if it was conforming. I, so it's already non-conforming for parking. I haven't reviewed. Okay. It so so. needs three per house, three per lot. So we have. So there is three now, and then we're adding three more separate driveway. There's three already there. Yeah. So this is. But not little. being taken away from the driveway. I guess is the point. Is will there be three after this, after yes. the lot line division? Yes. Because uh, they'll each have their own separate pull in street driveway. Before it was just a driveway pull in street and they could fit three cars. And does your revisions note where the parking, where you intend the, for the existing house the parking to be? Um, no. We, well, we, do, we just show the driveway. And, kind of and it has the dimensions on it to show that there's enough parking? I think that would help. So the quarry can look at what will exist after the lot line division to see what part, kind of parking would remain. So if you have the dimensions there, okay. that's usually what's done, not actual lines because we don't have the parking lines, but seeing that space will right. have a calculation. And we're kind of bound up. There's a 30 inch maple tree there, too. If we went any farther, we'd have to take that. Well, I thought that that's supposed to. I thought that was coming that's out coming on. Out. That's coming out on your plan. That's coming out. It would have to put to, to that driveway there. Um, uh, no, that's different. Two, right. One the front, one right. The house is taking out one. The driveway is supposed to take out one. Uh, yeah. the this one is further back. back. This one's not you knew right, but that one is. Yeah. That one is. Um, right. So if we extend this farther, yeah, that's 
Oh, I see. Well, I mean, I guess that's the issue is you could probably, yeah, if, if this is not, my, my question, I, I mean, I know this house. I don't know yeah. that that's really three parking spaces, mm -hmm. well, what, what you've got on the map right now. So I think that's what you got to figure out with right. Corey. Right, show those measurements yeah. so that he can really yeah. ascertain. So if it's not, I mean, we have to figure out how to deal with it because, again, he does need, the, he wanted the house to be conforming, so he very well may want yeah. something with the driveway either conforming or that you might seek the variance for that. So, so we would let's do. talk we would to Corey. But I think as far as the, the losing street parking, <coughs> that seems kind of like a blue uh, DPW issue. I mean, you got to grant, does it kind of have to grant access to the lot, which means losing parking? No, I, I, I'm, I'm just raising the issue. I don't, I don't know what the, the, the interplay is. Right. I think, and if Corey's okay with what you have in mind, it's yeah. fine. If okay. not, then you'll have to get yeah, your hands. Um, <coughs> thank you for pointing that out. Any other uh, issues come up with this one? Hi. How are you? Sorry. Good. Really. No problem. My best. <coughs> Okay. All right. So motion to circulate what she just said. So motion. <laughs> Second. Okay, anyone? Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So. Um, Is there a time It's just whenever you. Offline, you can just okay. get the details of what's necessary for that. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Anything else? All right. You know, um, and then you're planning on building on this other subdivision? In the future. Nothing, In the future. That's nothing, nothing to do with this. Nothing to do with this. Okay. All right. <coughs> But right now, you just want to deal with getting the subdivision. Yes. All right. Anything else? All right. So talk to Corey. Let's move forward on it. And um, we'll circulate our intent while you figure out what you need to go through ZDA. Okay. And then once I know, um, uh, you can tell me, Ashley, and I'll do the sort of conversation forum between us and ZBA. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. Uh, the next one is PB 1809. Um, all we had for this, we had a public hearing set, um, and the necessary paperwork did not go out, and the flyers, the forms did not go up. So all we have to do is set another public hearing for this. Um, so what, what's the date we have for that next public hearing? Uh, there's a meeting on November 20th, but I don't think that's not the time. Okay. So the first meeting in December, I believe, is the 4th. Okay, so um, we'll set a public hearing for the 4th of December. I have to think of what month it is. Uh, is anyone here from Bangkok? No? So we'll do a contact and let them know it's set. I already talked to them. And he knows it's set for the fourth. Um, not the fourth, but I'm gonna. I spoke <coughs> to him that I'd have people work for him tomorrow. He's gonna come to the building department. Okay. Steve, do you mind my interrupting? I don't want to take oh, anyone's sure. time, but um, having missed some things, did we end up seeing the revised floor plan on this? And it seems like it's all compliant with. I, um, I saw no, there that, seems we, to be a number of uh, things we still haven't seen, but I guess there was a lot of people eager to have a public hearing okay. started on so this. So similar to our first strategy to open it up and leave it open. Yeah, we're yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. But uh, peer pressure got me to get that public hearing started. So. It, which, and also we had already set the public hearing. It was hearing. the original intent, yeah. to right. open it but leave it open. It yeah, just never got to happen. Yeah. Exactly. Positive oh. peer pressure. Positive peer pressure. Okay, next we have PB8. Did you guys move to a No. Oh, sorry. Move motion to, to uh, set the public hearing for December. Fourth. Fill in the blank. Fourth. Second. 
Oh, in favor? Aye. Okay, so we'll be having it then. <clears throat> so PB 1824, Celia? Yes. So Celia just went through the um, ZBA and she got her parking variance. Um, so we have, I'm just reading through. So in addition to needing to refer this to the county, um, uh, oh yeah, so the, the initially there was, I guess, I don't know whether there was a change at one point we thought you're just adding a bedroom and didn't realize that there was gonna be a kitchen down there. Um, not exactly, but I'm not, the, the movement of bedroom thing is off Right, but it is a, a, you're gonna have an accessory apartment. I thought accessory wasn't the phrase anymore, but anyway, it's, it's within the footprint of the original. But it's an building. apartment in that it has its Studio. own kitchen. Yes, and, yes. yes. So because of that, uh, we just need to ask that you're, now, what? How much goes into her making a special, changing it to special use? I know the application needs to have that language. <clears throat> what else do you need from her to um, designate a special use permit? We just have to put it on there. I, I, yeah, there's like a checkbox on the application that says special use permit. Okay, so but is there a fee out. associated? I don't know. Okay, <laughs> so we have to check. But we have we didn't do that initially because we didn't realize it was going to be. Before you went to the ZBA, we didn't realize it was going to be its own kind of, for lack of a better word, sub full dwelling <laughs> with a kitchen. Um, <clears throat> so, Ashley will let you know what if there's anything more that has to change on the, um, uh, on the, no, not, yeah, anything has to change in the application, but if not, that we just have to change that to special use. But so it has to go to the Ulster County Planning Board, um, but in the meantime, we also have to set a public hearing. It, was, it went to the County Planning Board. It went to the County and Planning it was Board. For, it was no County Planning oh, okay, Board. so good. So all we have to do is set a public hearing. Um, so again, for December 4th, thank you. Um, so motion to set a public hearing for December 4th. So motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so on December 4th, you'll have a public hearing. Uh, ideally, if there's no major issues that come up, we can even do the resolution that day. Okay. 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 All right. You know, on this application, was there a resolution on the recreation fee? No. No, that will have that. I mean, that would be in the resolution that it will have to be charged a recreation fee because, well, because it in itself is a room. The, there was some challenge because her. So originally there the issue was if it was just a bedroom, but you were moving another bedroom, you weren't going to increase the number of bedrooms, there would no, not be a rec fee. But because this is now its own entity with, its, with a bedroom, despite what you do in the rest of the house, it would be subject to a rec fee because it's its own unit. You, yes, I can't, yeah. I, don't, I don't want to call it an accessory part, but it's its own place. So it no longer, I know that Corey wants to talk to you about the idea that if if you're just, if you're not adding a bedroom to your house, right. but this makes it different because it is its own unit. So it would be subject to the rec fee. Okay, although there's not gonna be a separate bedroom in there because it's designed as a studio apartment. But it, it is mean, considered a still a bedroom. I mean, there, but it's, yeah. not a, it's not a walled off bedroom. Yeah, that makes I think, difference. I don't think it does. I mean, because if somebody was just building a studio, they would still be subject to it. However, right now, the um, village board approved a scaled rec fee so the size is small it has a discounted amount because of the size so my guess is it's going to be i don't know the size of this offhand but that it's going to be has that been passed it has been right the new rec fee plan so um you won't have it's unlikely it seems unlikely i don't again i don't remember your square footage but you'll probably be subject to the reduced rec fee given the size Okay, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what it will end up being, but something like 430 square feet. Do you, anyone have handy that rec fee schedule? Well, 
Yeah, so it, it, it it's, is, I mean, I'm telling you it's discounted. I can't tell you yeah, how much, okay. but it's definitely going to be discounted <coughs> okay. given the size. So that's sort of how you deal with it being a studio, right. is it doesn't pay the full rec fee as if it was a one-bedroom house. Right, right, okay. And at one point, I don't remember which meeting it was, if it was maybe the first planning board meeting when you were here, but somebody mentioned like maybe there was a way to get a waiver. Because so we had requested that the village board sub, um, provide an opportunity for people to get a waiver mm -hmm. for hardship. They um, did not accept that okay. proposal, but okay. I would say that if you want to talk to the village board and encourage them in the future to reconsider the idea of a waiver, um, more power to you. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. And so we'll see you at the public hearing. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the documents. Okay. okay. I know what to do. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Okay, so uh, next we have stewards. So uh, this is currently still being reviewed by the ZBA, but um, the request was uh, to, for us to do what we can to go forward, even though we do not know, you know, the ZBA hasn't made their decision. Uh, so there's not a lot we can do right now. Um, because we do have to wait for the ZBA, but we can definitely happy to do what little pieces we can do until then. Yeah, with the coordinator to review the ZBA, is it going to be able to act? Uh, we're going to yes. set that. No, we're going to yeah. do all that now. But I mean, there's not much we yeah, can sort of talk about the site plan, right? Plan. Yeah. right. Um, but so you um, did you you did the full EF? Did you do it on the mapper? I did. Okay, good. Um, and. Okay, so we do need to declare our intent to be the lead agency and circulate a notice of intent. So, oh. you could also could you do a single motion to um, type it as that one action. Uh, in that same declare. Okay, so motion to type it as it. I thought I was so good that I got the whole language. to declare it a type one action and our intent to be the lead agency and circulate a notice of intent to involve the agencies. So motion. Second. Second. <laughs> Excuse me, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we'll move. Um, so there's not much we can talk about in the full EAF um, until we've circulated that intent, but was there, if there was anything that stood out that you just sort of want to bring to the applicant's attention? Um, you're welcome to now. We, we're, this is our sort of unofficial yeah. review of the EAF, but you know. Maybe there's just like, I had three things that I just thought would okay. be helpful to either change or clarify um, in terms of the responses to the questionnaire. Um, one is in, I'm always hard with Roman numerals. Let's see, D, <coughs> page. Uh, page five. Um, uh, which is like, uh, it begins with the letter C, it's the question with the proposed action use or create a new demand for water. And um, I know that you did respond in some detail with the analysis of sanitary wastewater um, per day, um, you know, likely generation, but you said in the water question, no. And just wondering if, um, if you've done any analysis to determine whether it truly will not increase use of water or whether you are making an assumption that it won't? No, we're essentially making an assumption based on the, the size of the store. So in, <coughs> if in a later question, you're talking about traffic generation. We, if you use um, the land use code 853 for the IP manual, um, you're taking a four pump convenience store with gas and you're replacing it with a four pump convenience store with gas. So it's like almost like for like. Yeah. So in that instance, I would we we did not think that a new demand for water would be. Present. Okay. I wish your store a lot more success than the store that's currently <laughs> yeah. located on that corner, and therefore I think maybe we just would want to. I mean, we're gonna have, if it's gonna be a full EAF. I think we're just gonna want to talk about, not to say that we're in a shortage scenario, but just talk about the fact that I think 
I'm hoping if your store is built, it's going to use more of everything that that store uses. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the other option, I mean, in the action we have that the existing sewers will close, mm -hmm. so that water will just right. basically come this way. I mean, yeah, uh, I have to say, I mean, I, 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 um, I think Stewart's is a great resource. I'm, I'm, I'm wishing for it the great success at this location. But I, to me, this is like a really important new, like anchor development of this part of town. And the new location seems to be a much better, more visible, you know, kind of more traffic location. So I'm going to expect that you're going to succeed and, and it's going to be much busier than the old stewards um, and at least I I'd be interested in in what can be done to accommodate the possibility that there's going to be substantially more traffic flow because the intersection is now on and that's going to do better than it did at the old location in part because it's closer uh, to the center of the village I, I want it to do well I'm assuming it's going to do well but I think it's going to have a big if it's built a big impact on that intersection especially and on that area so that I mean, there's a whole bunch of other issues with, with uh, traffic safety, pedestrian safety, that intersection. Uh, you know, thinking about with this, but I think the the more that the application can like anticipate these kinds of possibilities, the better. Okay. That was actually my my second oh. question was just around increased traffic. I think probably your <laughs> premise is the same on that answer to say no, it's not likely to increase traffic because it's a similar store replacing a similar store and. And John, I'm actually comparing in terms of relatively, relativity of the consumption or the traffic, I'm comparing to the store that's on the lot today is zero. It's versus <laughs> the store that you're yeah, proposing to build it, versus so the so other already, store. I mean, so if I could finish, oh. what I was saying is that I think in terms of traffic that you might also use the same calculus that you're describing, which is four pumps, X square feet, we're going to be four pumps, X square feet, it's going to be the same thing. But I'm just making sure that, as John says, you're prepared for a conversation that actually makes assumptions that there's going to be more traffic and more volume for your store because it's going to be the new stewards, you know, and, and, and you want it to have more traffic. I would more. add to that that also the argument that um, you're closing one stewards and moving the other should be careful because the location has much, has specific traffic implications that are very different than the other location being on that corner. Um, so you should think about that. Um, and we did bring it to you before the idea of there is a, tr a very thorough traffic report that was done. Hey, I was just about to say, we've already contacted Mazer, Great. Um, and they're going to do our Good. traffic Good. study. Great. That's going to be a huge uh, help. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. I, and yeah, that's, 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 that's probably here. one of the biggest Good concerns time. in that corner is yep. traffic. The use, though, I, one of the things I think you have to realize also, I'm not saying the, the volume of the transactions and the in and out and, and I think the current store with its one way in, one way out is restricted, particularly when we have gasoline deliveries. Um, but we are a large pass by trip generator. So the premise being you're not leaving your house to go to stewards, more you're passing stewards and stopping. So that affects the in and out, but it doesn't affect like new trips to the store. But keep in mind, I think we're all, I mean, I'm gonna to continue to encourage that we consider this to be apples to apples for that existing lot location, as he was saying, and the, and the specific <laughs> implications of that lot location yeah. and its intersection, not whether it's going to be more or less than the stewards that's down the street. We, that's really where I think the yeah. conversation. Yeah. 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 I mean, the steward, the, where you have it now, the in-out, I, I know, creates its own restricted problems with gasoline delivery, whatever. But like, you know, pulling out of that, the out for there is onto 32 with very broad views either direction and sometimes it's annoying to wait there but you know the new place is going to have presumably exits onto Du Bois where there's already now a major kind of traffic lineup and your exit presumably is going to like go right into that existing traffic jam and so it's like going to be a different problem than what you have with this. So this when, you, when you, when you, what's, do you have a timeline for that traffic analysis yet or you're waiting to have ZBA make its final decision? Yeah, I mean, I was more of the mindset because I couldn't return for um, site plan until the ZBA determination. Right. Um, I'm not sure. I wonder what their turnaround is. So the, the ZBA won't actually be able to actively complete ZBA? Yeah. So that was one of the things I was going to ask is if you're having a second meeting in December, you can't make, assume under the assumption that you were going to 
be lead agent and make a negative declaration, um, they can't act until January. So if you have a second meeting in December, that should conceivably give 30 days for okay. the other agencies to, to declare or not declare whether they're going to be lead agent or not. So um, I would assume that the very, I mean, the, the public hearing for the ZBA is set for the for December 11th. Um, and if you had a second meeting in December <coughs> where you took a secret position, then the ZBA could act in, in January. Um, if you said to me, which would be somewhat difficult, I think just, and I'll go back to Mazer, I literally got the um, proposal on, I think on Monday. Um, <coughs> I don't think I could come back with a full-blown traffic study uh, for the secret component. Um, and that would be tied to the site plan anyway. Um, but I do think I could have it by January. Yeah, I think that's fine. I don't think it needs to be for the secret component. Okay. But I, it, it, but the longer that takes, the yeah, longer no, everything else takes because that's going to be an issue with the site plan. Um, now, you know, we already spoke about it being existing because of the existing um, use of the site that the MBR requirement for mixed use will be able to be waived because so we won't ask you to stick an apartment above there. But at, um, at, do we, what about, and I'm only asking out of ignorance, with the uh, Historic Preservation Committee Commission, HPC, how does that work in a situation like this where they already, do they have their existing, their, it's Stewart's looks like Stewart's looks. But you know, if this was any other building, we would ask them to review. We, I didn't meet with them. On oh, you side. did. Yeah. Um, so I met. Did with, they make recommendations? Tom. Tom. Tom was, uh -huh. yeah, was, he's, that was him over yeah. there, right? Okay. Um, their meeting is until the twentieth. Okay. Um, and they do plan on making. Oh, okay. Good. That solves that yeah. for me because um, I just wasn't was sure just, how that works with something. Their like um, their comments were, and I'm not trying to overstate their position because they'll formally make one, but. They're appreciative we didn't do a freestanding sign um, because it, it's aesthetically and then just visually with the corner, it doesn't, it's not something else that's gonna be on the corner. Um, they prefer the architecture of the clapboard. Um, they were okay with stone where the building department made a recommendation for brick. Um, and then they appreciated the building being pushed <coughs> to the street versus the larger center. Okay, well, that, that answers the question. I just didn't, again, with that, a franchise type of situation, I wasn't quite sure how, but I'm appreciative that you are talking to them because that solves that for us. Um, <clears throat> was there any other? Just one other quick like yeah. question about it, the yes, no. Um, was, uh, <coughs> will the proposed action have on page um, eight, will the proposed action have outdoor lighting? And you indicated no, but then you specified the type of lighting that would exist. So no, I'm guessing you, we, that I just needs to be a yes. I think you were thoughtful about the lighting with downlit LED and, and canopy yeah, and soft, the, soft yeah. light, all that is the right stuff to be saying, but I just wanted to make sure that you knew that. All right. Anything else? All right. So we will move forward on circulating our intents. I love saying something that I have no idea what it is, but I know we're going to circulate this intent. Yes, so the involved agencies, which is the CBI, and then I think you indicated the DOT, which permit required, is that true? Uh, yeah, the highway work. Yeah. Okay, and it'll be the only. Sure. Okay. So it'll just go to the DOT and to the zoning board um, and no one objects within 30 days. You can then assume the agency and proceed with the secret. I would suggest you may want to also refer to SHPO just because since it's type one, but Okay, does that slow down any of this process? Okay, all right. Okay, um, anything else? All right. Yeah, yeah, I guess the only thing will be Alana or just let me know if I can come back. And yeah, she will. Alana's very good with that. We email regularly now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys
get to know her. She's very lovely. Yeah. But be nice to her at all times. I am. I'm just saying universally, everyone has to be nice to Alana. Or I hear about it. That's how things get done. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You know, we'll get into the nitty gritty soon. Um, so, uh, motion to approve the minutes from October 16th. So motion. Second. Any seconds? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I, can, uh, I can't stay. second that. I wasn't here. None of them were here? <laughs> Is that really true? <laughs> yeah, we're here. I thought I talked to Rick and he said even if you're not here, you're allowed to vote. I'm not, minutes oh, approved. he did. Because he said the minutes don't necessarily need to be. Yeah. yeah. So anyone can second it and you all get to vote. Aye. <laughs> Aye. All right. Everyone agrees. Um, um, I'm doing them. The T and A. So, so uh, we need a motion to close the T and A of number ninety-four. Um, do you want to tell us what those two things are? Uh, the closure of trustee agency account. It's just the escrow account. Right, but there wasn't a two of them or one. Oh, for which, Michael back. For Michael back. So yeah. closing the trust and agency account. So motion to approve motion. the closure. Second. Second. All in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. So I'd like to um, officially welcome John and Noel and tell you how much I appreciate that you are stepping up. I can't promise that every meeting will be this quick, but I do make do my best. To. You have been terrific. Yeah, we will start with it with a couple of these type ones. It's gonna there will they I can't it, they may get a little bit longer, but. We're moving through it. One okay. thing I wanted to mention is when we did, and I, and I emailed with you about this a lot, yeah. when we did the uh, type one action, um, the last time we did a type one action, we had that questionnaire that was the Q&A document, which really guided the conversation. Yeah. I didn't know what you, I don't And it's available on site, it's available online in the New York State website. Um, but I really recommend that. Can you help find it yep. and send it to um, us? Yep, I can look in the old folder. I mean, it really was when, you know what I'm talking about. It was the part. It was, what, but it was what helped us arrive at a conclusion whether it was going to be a pause deck or an egg deck. So that it was, was the, the part. Two. Yeah. It was the part two questions. Yeah. 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 And so they've already completed their full EAF. I think everybody's seen it. Maybe we made a couple tweaks today. But I think that was a really helpful um, process to make sure that we made the right logic decision mm -hmm. on the declaration. Oh, that's good. Do you have a copy of that? No, so that's something that you complete as a board once you're. No, I mean just sort of the list of questions. Yeah, yes, I mean yes. we can look at, but a lot can circulate. All right, it somehow I don't, know, I don't know where it is. Or where okay. it is. We'll, we'll figure. We'll it out. find it and then we'll circulate it. It's, it's helpful. It. It's like it's like it's like seeker for dummies. Great. Matter of fact, there was a thing called seeker for dummies. If everybody, there was yeah. nobody on the board at the time. I have the book. You do, yeah. Yeah, Michael bequeathed it to me. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, with no further conversations or anything to discuss, motion to close? So motion. All in favor? Aye. All right, I did it. Thank you. Apparently. Yes. Yeah. I resent that. I resemble that. Um, How does that I think that maybe with Corey and yeah. I mean, Cody and you, and maybe the four of us could just out of here, you know, maybe get a coffee and I could just go through some of the basic stuff. Yeah. Um, kind of what things mean, what is the secret, what is what is I know, I literally just wrote the secret for some reason. I was like, I'm going to need to play. And it's spelled S-E-Q-R, although for some reason the attorneys make it S-E-Q-R. 